Thank you very much, uh, Professor Srinivasan. I can, I can uh, say from experience that uh, his comments and constructive criticism have always been listened to very, very carefully at the highest levels in government in India, and a lot of corrections in the past, certainly I know, have followed his, his comments. So I am sure that uh, this is another contribution to the, to the uh, correction of several of the issues that you pointed out. And we have now uh, Mr. Berkey, a friend. He spent most of his uh, professional life at the World Bank and had a number of senior positions, including Director of China and Mongolia Department and Vice President for Latin America and Caribbean until 1999. He was a finance minister of Pakistan from 96 to 97. He's the chairman of the Institute of Public Policy, Lahore, and much more closely an associate with us at the Institute of South Asian Studies, where we value his presence. His latest book is titled South Asia in the New World Order, the RCE of Regional Cooperation. Uh, Mr. Barke would be talking about how the South Asian diasporas could work together for the good of the region, an extremely important topic in this conference. Mr. Berkey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I've been looking forward to this uh, conference for quite a while. I remember about a year ago, Chairman Gopinath mentioned to me that he was going to take this kind of initiative. And I then didn't imagine that this will be so big, such a comprehensive event. Uh, but to paraphrase Neil Armstrong, every long journey begins with a very long step. So you have taken a very long step, and congratulations, and I hope this particular uh, venture will pay off, uh, not immediately, but over the long term. We've already had uh, several very profound statements. Uh, we've learned a lot, and uh, TN just gave us uh, some very interesting background on what has happened to the various South Asian economies going way back into history and where they are now. And that would uh, lend a perspective to some of what I want to say. Uh, listening to what I have already heard, there are a couple of uh, uh, missing uh, subjects. Maybe they will be covered in the later presentation, but let me just mention two of them. Uh, the first one of these I have absolutely no competence to address, which is the contribution that diasporas are making to the development of the English novel. Uh, both my wife and I are very uh, keen readers of novels, and we've uh, enjoyed them. Uh, maybe at some stage you want to uh, get somebody to take a look at how that particular field of activity has contributed. Uh, there's enormous amount of rich literature coming out uh, from the members of the South Asian diaspora. Uh, just to mention a few number, Jumpa Lari, Salman Rushdi, Nadeem Aslam, Ved Mehta, Vikram Seth, Mohsin Hamid, and so forth. And I think uh, they have shaken uh, the world of the novel. The second one, uh, in spite of what uh, the rich discourse uh, uh, that we had from TN, we haven't talked much about numbers. And uh, given my training uh, in both uh, mathematics and economics, uh, numbers are absolutely essential to give perspective to, uh, to a subject. Uh, today, we have already heard two numbers. With respect, to the South, with respect to the size of the South Asian diaspora. Uh, the Prime Minister and Gopinath Pillay, and in fact I, in, a, uh, in an article that was published yesterday, have mentioned a number of 50 million as the total number of uh, people of South Asian origin who are living outside their own countries. Prague Khanna, 
uh, if I heard him correctly, mentioned a figure of 25 million. Uh, when I was at the World Bank, we developed a rule of thumb, which was that you can expect every member of a diasporic community to spend about $1,000 back home. And I used to tell my colleagues that if uh, uh, this is not happening, then there is some matter, either with the diaspora community or with the financial system that they are dealing with. The World Bank tells us that there are about the total amount of remittances uh, sent by diaspora, South Asian diasporas to the homelands is 75.8 billion. So if you apply this $1,000 rule, then we are talking about 75 million people of uh, uh, diaspora of South Asian diasporas scattered uh, all over the world. So in that context, in a number focused kind of uh, approach, uh, I would like to ask seven questions and then I'll at attempt to answer not all of them because I already see that I've taken up 4.27 minutes of my time. So the seven questions are, how many South Asians live outside their countries? Number two, how much they earn and how much they save from their earnings? Number three, what kind of asset creation is being done by the diasporas uh, represented by the South Asians? Number four, how much they are increasing, investing uh, in the erstwhile homelands? Number five, how much they could invest. They are investing, but could they invest more? Number six, why could the diasporas work together? What, um, how could the diasporas work together on regional projects? And closer to home, how could a place like Singapore play a role in getting the South Asian diasporas to work together, particularly in terms of uh, promoting regional projects. 